So this is our green jacuzzi. I wanted to get rid of the data green and make this a white tub. So I'm using Armor Glaze uh, to put a adorable white finish on this. I also have another video where I finished the faucet and fixtures, and here's a link to that. Here are the tools and supplies that I used. I used my Ryobi with, I believe, 120 grit sandpaper. This helped remove the caulk residue. And I also used Lysol toilet bowl cleaner to chemically etch the tub to promote better adhesion. Um, I also have gloves, mostly for the Lysol, and a scraper and a spackle knife to scrape off any caulk that is still around the tub. The spackle knife is pretty sharp, and it should work good for this. I'm going to remove the front panel and refinish it in the garage because it's just too big for the bathroom. So this is the caulk removal. I actually did remove a lot of it already prior to the video, but I need to go over it and really clean it up better. Uh, just more caulk removal here. It's an important step because the armor glaze or the echo pill won't adhere to the caulk, so you have to make sure to remove it all. So take some time, get it clean and ready. Even after scraping, there was still some stubborn residue that I decided to remove with the sander. Hey guys, if you like this video, please subscribe. I uh, really appreciate it. So after sanding, I took the hose from the sprayer that I'd already removed and I hosed down all the dust from sanding. Next, put on my gloves and uh, my scour pads. I use them to apply the Lysol toilet bowl cleaner. This will help remove any of the soap film or any other residues. And I think it may remove or etch the finish of your tub so that the epoxy um, it'll adhere as good as possible. Just take your time and make sure you get every surface. So I let the Lysol sit for about 10 or 15 minutes and I could still see some visible soap scum. I had a scour pad on a stick, which I used to remove the uh, now loosened soap scum, and that pretty much got everything off. I then hosed everything down again. I used hot water to make sure to remove all the chemicals. I made sure to get everything because the epoxy might not adhere if there was any chemical left. Uh, I couldn't hose down the outside of the tub, so I used a wet rag to remove the Lysol. So these are the uh, Jacuzzi Jet Rings that I now have refinished in another video here. Once I was done using the water, I removed the drain to make sure to get the epoxy underneath where the drain sits so that there would be no weak points or spots for it to come up or chip. I bought two buckets of Armo Glaze because my tub's extra large, so I combined them into one bucket and mixed thoroughly for 10 minutes. After this, I let them sit for a few minutes, and then I mixed them again for maybe two or three minutes. So I taped all the fixtures and the jets prior to the application, and I also used the hair dryer and towels to make sure the tub was totally dry. Underneath the drain, I was able to secure a plastic iced coffee cup to catch any extra epoxy that might make its way down. I also decided to make the scooper out of a little two liter. Uh, the idea was that I could pour and also scoop up extra to redistribute it to areas that may need it. And here's the pour in 5 times speed. If you want to see it in real time speed, please click the link for the uh, full long version of this video. It's a two-parter, so make sure if you really want some extra details to watch it. As I said in the videos, I don't think anyone's made a video for refinishing a jacuzzi tub with a pour on kit like Armor Glaze or Echopel which both have pretty similar uh, features and application methods. But uh, you can see that I do have a small paint roller, but it's important to note that I'm not painting this product on. I'm really just using the roller to kind of push the product around and guide it where it needs to go. I slide it across the top to guide the excess down the sides, but typically since this product self-levels from gravity, you should pour it two-thirds down the wall and pull the product up in the bottom to get one... Uh, the last one third. You don't really need to paint it on, it kind of goes where it wants to. And you don't want to keep pulling it down because you might create a thin spot, so you want to pour it up in the bottom. And if you do happen to create a thin spot, this is definitely the time to fix it and re-pour those spots. So don't be afraid to use your little scooper and scoop some extra up and just, just re-pour it in those thin spots. It'll self-level and fix itself. Because it'll look e uneven at first, but give it time. And uh, it'll pretty much dry to a smooth and like mirror-like finish almost. Just keep in mind that this product does kind of go where it wants. And it can create a bit of a mess. Um, I was able to use a razor knife to remove some that got, had gotten onto the floor the next day. But if you're going to do that and you do get some, try to remove it as fast as possible. 
uh, within 24 hours at the most, because it really does set up that it's hard to remove. So once I had everything finished, I figured I'd let it sit a while and I get started on the panel with the epoxy while it was still liquid. Uh, it was pretty straightforward at this point since I already done the tub and I was just pouring it on with the bucket and using a small paint roller to kind of push it but not paint it on. I did start to get a little low on the product and I had a tough time coating the panel but it was really my fault because I forgot to check the coffee cup that I left under the drain in the tub which was totally full of product. And it would have given me more than enough. So uh, don't worry as long as you remember to grab that cup. Uh, two kits will be plenty for your jacuzzi tub. And you may see me pulling this down, which is not really a good technique. But I was running low and I was more worried about not finishing it than it looking perfect, unfortunately. And I was actually more worried about how the tub came out than the panel anyway. Because the tub's really going to have the rare wear and tear and it's what you're going to look at the panel's kind of just sitting there to hide the uh, pipe work beneath the tub So after I was done the panel, I went up to check on the tub and I fixed a few spots that I wasn't happy with while the epoxy was still pliable. Uh, they didn't look too good after I initially went over them, but from watching other videos and seeing other people, I was pretty confident that they would level out eventually, which they did. Um, I also didn't show it in the video here, but I did go over everything with a heat gun on like a low air setting, but regular heat. And it did remove any of the bubbles or small imperfections pretty easily. Uh, and I did that after these last touch-ups. So this last part is 24 hours after the coating and it feels really durable. It's already hardened up like a shell. Uh, I still wanted to give it more time though because they recommend 36 hours, but I do think it helped that the weather was in the mid 70s during the day and you know it made it probably set up a little quicker. So one last note was that I did heat the bathroom up to around 72 degrees overnight prior to the application. Uh, I'm not sure this really made a difference, but I've heard several people do this and recommend it and I figured no big deal to throw a space heater in the bathroom and heat it up a little bit. Um, and I think that's pretty much everything, guys. So I just want to say 
Thanks for watching. And if you need more details, please comment. And I can answer any questions now that I've done this. And also you can watch the uh, longer two-part series on this for more details. Uh, please, you know, like, subscribe, comment, whatever you need. If you need, if you need any, uh, any help, I'll, I'll definitely get back to you. Thanks a lot.